a very simple or a straightforward procedure but it is a therapeutic package it consists of multiple components and these components are not just physical exercises but they incorporate a lot of behavioral interventions all right so we apply cmt to people in different stages of stroke from acute to the chronic stages and for whom do we apply we apply it for people who do not use their arm for daily activities we consistently see that our patients who come to us ask us a lot of questions they ask us will i be able to wear my shirt will i be able to wear my pant will i be able to eat with my right hand will i ever be able to eat and clean with different hands when can i drive my bike again aren't these the common questions which our patients ask to us yes so how do we answer these questions how do we help these people to improve in it right the first and foremost thing we need to understand if at all we need to address this problem is do patients really use their limb if patients are using their limb for daily activities and if they practice we can see that they will eventually improve right so when we ask this question we see that stroke survivors have physical dysfunction of the arm as you all know and they could be mild moderate or severe dysfunction a severe physical dysfunction is something where the patient is unable to move his arm he is not able to open his fingers he is not able to do anything with his arm we can very clearly understand that a person with a severe dysfunction will not be able to use it that's quite obvious but what about other patients who are able to lift their arm or able to open their fingers do they use we see that they do not use their arm and in fact it has been found out that more than 50% of the people who had suffered stroke do not use their arm for any productive activity despite them having ability in their arm now this is a sad part right so what we are going to say is what is the root cause of this phenomena the root cause of the phenomena has been attributed to something called as a learned non use and we are going to understand using a model what is this learned non use during the early stages after the neural lesion when the patient is discharged from the hospital when he returns to his home he starts rethinking about how to live his life back he thinks about will i do my activities for example now would i eat food would i drink water would i dress as time goes on he starts thinking not only about self care he also thinks about what he can do at home and more importantly he starts rethinking how does he get back to his life how to go to job how to drive the vehicle and all these all these different needs are the basic ones which drive a person to keep doing things and if you look in the slide we have in the center part the hierarchy of needs right so these needs start driving the patients who come out of icu and are living at home right and as they start attempting to do adl right now they face a problem what's the problem they have a normal side where when they try to do activities they can do it and with the other side where they were trying to do most of the activities previously before stroke they are not able to do it right so what happens right if you look into the left side of the panel about the normal side right when patients attempt they are successful when they are successful they tend to be motivated to take for example they uh, try to uh, take a glass of water and drink water right when they are thirsty and their thirst is quenched so what they do is they try to do it 
on the other side now coming on to the right side of the panel the affected side the patient's arm is affected with sensory motor and other problems right now when he tries attempting to lift the same glass of water when he's thirsty what happens is unsuccessful we see patients that when they try to lift the water the uh, water the glass tumbler turns off and the water spills down right now once this spills he attempts again and again it spills and so he starts getting demotivated in using the affected side now this is what happens in the earlier stage now as time goes on what happens when the patient tries to keep doing the activity right as day after day when he attempts although there are some improvements which are happening on the affected side it is not enough for him to complete doing the activity and so he stops to use the affected side and this is called as a learn non use what is the meaning of learn non use is he learns not to use the affected side and what happens he starts compensating he starts trying to use the other hand in order to perform one common example is all of us when we are dressing or putting a button we normally put it with both the hands that's the normal way of doing it but when a patient attempts he completes the whole activity with one hand and that's his normal side right so when he wants to go out immediately what he does he starts wearing his shirt and it takes a lot of time with the affected side so he starts doing it with the unaffected side it takes a very short time and then he continues to do this practice throughout day after day right now this also leads to some secondary changes in the affected side we know there are a lot of tightness they start getting pain and a lot of it because of not because of not using the arm so the problem which is happens phenomena is called as learn non use now the learning phenomena is not something which happens outside it also starts bringing producing quantitative changes in the brain if you look at the mri pictures which are shown here they are functional mri and you can see on the top panel are the brain of a normal subject and the bottom panel you see the brain image of a stroke patient what you see in this functional mri is a orange and reddish region which tells about when the patient is attempting to do a movement what happens normal people when we use our right hand or left hand what happens is the opposite side of the brain gets activated that's what happens in a normal person but if you see the bottom panel where we discuss about the stroke patient you see that on the right side whether they use the right hand or they use the left hand the region of activation is always only one side and that's the right side right so what is what we observe from this is as the patient had tried using the normal side for most of his activities even when he attempts performing movements with the right or left hand it is the normal side